for watching. I know many of you have struggled to understand what the will of God is concerning healing and miracles for today. How is it that we can find out? Does God use sickness and disease and pains to teach, test, and punish? Or does God heal? Well, you know what the Bible says in Romans 12, that we can prove what is the good and the acceptable and the perfect will of God. Well, how do we prove it? Same way we've proved everything else that we know about God. We go to the book, we go to the Bible, we find our scriptures so that we can thus prove what is God's will. Well, so that's what we've been doing. And we've been going back and looking under the old covenant and we're looking at these rituals and we're starting to see that they were healed by working rituals in the old covenant. Well, couldn't you and I expect to be healed under a new and better covenant? Join me tonight as we go back and look at the year of Jubilee right here on Christ the Healer. specifically divine healing and miracles. That's what we've been looking at. And uh, listen, I know there's all kinds of opinions out there uh, on this one here. Uh, there's really a dividing point, I believe, in Christianity on this topic. You know, I just had a pastor of a church, I guess, warn somebody who watches, uh, told him, you know, be careful watching those guys. They hold a kind of a strange belief on healing. Well, do we? That's what we want to know. So that's what I'm saying. There's, there's a really hard uh, dividing line here in Christianity. So we wanted to set out because Romans 12 and verse 2 says this. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So there is a danger that many have had their thinking conformed to this world's ways of thinking. And here we are being encouraged, what? To have our beliefs begin to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And so we have to begin to gain this understanding from the word of God so we can prove what is the good and the acceptable and the perfect will. And so we can't go around saying, well, I believe this because my church says, or my pastor said, or even because my mama said. You remember that old song we used to sing as children? Uh, you remember when it would say, yes, Jesus loves me. Well, how did you know? Because the Bible tells me so. That is the truth right there, because the Bible tells me so. That's where we go to discover the real will of God. Isn't that how we discovered God's will concerning ever, every other foundational belief that we hold here. This is what separates Christianity from other religions is we can go to the Bible. We can find those scriptures that have, have really formed that foundation of believing on the inside of us. That's how we know that we won't have any other gods before him. That's how we discovered that Jesus is the only begotten and, and he's the only way to the father. That's how we discovered his will concerning uh, murder and fornicating or envy or any of those things. The Bible tells me so. So how is it that suddenly now when it comes to this topic of healing all of a sudden, how can it be so such a great divide among believers. The Bible tells us so here. Romans says that we can prove it, meaning we can go to the word of God. We can find the proof either way. Either he does heal or he does not heal or sometimes he heals or sometimes he doesn't, but the Bible will tell me so. That's what we have to go look here. That's, the, that's what we are going to allow to transform our thinking. And so too many of a believer has, has allowed, you know, doctrines of the church, theological arguments, personal experiences to really begin to Form your beliefs. I think it's time for us to go back to the scriptures, allow that to transform your thinking. Now, why is this so important? Not for the reasons that a lot of people think. People get really defensive when you start talking about beliefs, right? Because you think I'm coming after your denominational belief or, or maybe I'm trying to get you to change your thinking and become a Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran, whatever, right? right? We hold on to some things and some titles and uh, somebody's always trying to get me to abandon my faith and make me something else. Well, I can, I can promise you this. That's not the case here. I'm so non-denominational. I'm not non-denominational, okay? So I want you to know that. But the reason that you really have to do this, again, not, not because I'm trying to get you to believe in a church uh, system or a denominational belief necessarily. Really, this is something here is the same reason that you needed to know his will concerning salvation. Uh, faith begins where the will of God is known. Now, once you discovered his will, God's will concerning salvation and what he really thought about you, you were able to, based off of the information that you received through the word of God, ask Jesus to come into your heart. So this is summed up in, in 1 John 5, 14 and 15. This is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, then we know we have those things that we desired from him or that we asked from him. And so that's the confidence. That's the assurance of faith that we have from him if we ask anything according to his will, which means you must know the will of God beforehand. 
before you approach him. And once you know that, you understand that he's going to hear you and he's going to answer you. That's how we've done everything else in our Christian walk. But not healing, though. No, all of a sudden, everybody wants to use personal experiences. Well, we prayed and they didn't get healed. Well, we, they, they said they believed and they died anyways. Guys, your personal experience will not change the word of God. But if we can get back into the scriptures, back into the word of God, we can allow that to transform our thinking and then understand that all of a sudden God's experiences and God's word can begin to change our personal experiences. You never use this method in any other area of Christianity. You can't base what you believe off of just what we see taking place in the world or just say, well, God's in control and it's happening. There's plenty of things happening on the earth right now. I think you understand that is not the will of God taking place. So how are we going to know what God really thinks? You got to go to the word of God. You got to find your scriptures. That's where you're going to find your answer. So it is with the topic of healing and miracles right here. We set out to do just that, finding proof. Is it or is it not God's will to heal? Does he use it at times or is the healer of it all the time? I want to know what his will is because, again, this whole mysterious will of God, there is no mysterious will of God. We have a Bible that tells us exactly what God's will is. And if you're having a hard time understanding the word of God, then do what John said. Ask the helper. Ask the one that knows all things, the Holy Spirit, to begin to guide you into an understanding through the scriptures. That's his job. And so once we begin to go through the book and we discover the truth, because here's the thing, once we can locate truth, truth will make you free. And we need free. We need free from all kinds of things, pains and addiction and mental torment and broken hearts. And there is a freedom to be found. Let's go find that freedom in the word of God tonight. So we've discovered a bunch so far that has so far proven that it is God's will to heal. This is all from the word of God, by the way. So we discovered where God's word is medicine. We saw that over in Proverbs 4. We saw in Proverbs 18 that a strong spirit of a man will sustain you through bodily pain. It, it heals your body. We've also seen four times in scripture where it talked about the devil uh, or, or, or how it's evil in in conjunction with sickness and disease. We didn't see where it said God, but it specifically said the devil or Satan. We saw how Jesus came to redeem us specifically from the curse of the law. Well, then we went and looked at the curse of the law and we discovered all these physical things that were in that curse of the law that we have been redeemed from. It says that he ransomed us. He rescued us from all those things. Well, here's the thing. If he paid a price to ransom us from it, why would he still want us to be held captive with it? So that's what we've been looking at because we discovered the price for redemption. Uh, the price that was paid was the blood of Jesus. That's what we saw. Was the blood enough or not? I think we know the answer. So we've seen a bunch of things here. If you missed any of these, look, I'm not, a very, I'm not very good at marketing, so I'm not going to have you go buy things from me. You can go buy things off the website, but guys, I put all of this, uh, these episodes for free on Two Guys in the Bible Facebook or Two Guys in the Bible YouTube channel, so there you go. You can just go watch all this. It's way more important for me for you to get the information than to spend five bucks on my ministry. But anyway, here's the thing. Over the last couple of episodes now, we have gone back. We are looking at the types uh, in the Old Testament, types of redemption. Why? Well, because 1 Corinthians 10 said this, that those things that were recorded back then were written for our example right here in the new, for our instruction, meaning we don't toss out all these things. We go back and look at examples of what we should begin to expect under this new covenant. So you understand, even though it's a new covenant, it's the same God, right? So uh, to make this basic as I can here, we're looking back, and, and if we can find in these rituals that they were required to do, right? They had to, they had to follow them, I mean, by it. Tea, right? They had to do these steps, these works, if you will. They had to do these things, physically go through these procedures laid out. But when they did, they were able to experience healing in their physical bodies. And if we can look, for example, that they could go and they could kill a spotless lamb and eat its body and experience healing, then shouldn't you and I, under a new and better promises, new and better covenant, be able to see Jesus and his body as a sacrifice as our spotless lamb, his blood, the blood of the lamb? Shouldn't you and I, under the new, be able to expect healing under the new as Jesus, as our Passover lamb, and his body was broken? And if they could find that in the old in some ritual, then could we find it? Well, yes, we can. Yes, we can, because we have a new and a better. So if they were healed under the old one, and you and I have a new and better one, well, there you go. It makes sense to me. So we've been looking back to see in these old ones if we could find what would point to the new. And we found some amazing things. So if they found redemption in the rituals here, well, then here you and I, we can go back and we can find Jesus in what we call the types and shadows of these rituals that will point to Jesus healing us today, these types of redemption. Now, 
The definition of redemption is this. The act of saving or being saved from sin, error, or evil. The action of regaining or gaining possession of something in exchange for a payment of clearing of a debt. It's retrieval or recovery or reclaiming. Did Jesus reclaim us? Did he retrieve us? Did he redeem us? Now listen, not just your spirit man. That's what people like to lean towards, your spirit man. Well, yes, your spirit man, but much more than your spirit man as well. 1 Corinthians 6, I want you to go back and I want you to see the context of this. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, uh, verses 17 through 20. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Okay, so there's the spirit side, right? We got that. There's the spirit, man, no problem. But now he begins to transition over into talking about the body. Flee sexual immorality, every sin that a man does outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, who you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought with a prayer. Christ, therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. So there it is, spirit and body, both bought with a price. These bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, friends. That's why it's so important you know, understand that, right? So we are to glorify God in our bodies, just like we would the natural temple or the natural. We take care of these buildings. We take care of the houses of worship, if you will. How much more where he inhabits these bodies, we need to take care of them as well. The house. Why? Because a payment was made for the house. So he thought the body was important. And so we've gone back and we've seen this in the Passover lamb. These people were slaves their entire lives. And here they would take the lamb and the blood was placed upon the doorpost. Remember the Passover lamb and the destroyer passed over. But there was a second set of instructions that night to take the body of the spotless lamb and break that and eat it. Why now? Because the blood was likened for the spiritual condition, right? We're coming out. We're free. We're coming out because of the blood. The destroyer passed over. But why the body? Well, it was body for a body. So all of a sudden it was reported that these people, when they ate the body, here all of a sudden they come out, these people that have been sick and diseased and overworked and in slavery and broken bones and worn out, suddenly they walk out of this slavery. And the Bible says not one feeble among the tribes, not one sick, diseased, wounded person out of over a million people who had been in slavery their entire lives. Jesus is our Passover lamb, that the blood was shed for our sins and his body was broken for you and I. And by those stripes, we are healed. That was, so praise God. Listen, we saw the cleansing of the leper ritual. You Remember that one where somebody who's incurable, medically impossible, it was a death sentence, if you will. And we know that it's not enough that they were just physically uh, sick, but their entire lives really uh, were taken from them. No way to earn money. Uh, you know, I mean, we understand all the other issues that come uh, with sickness and disease. It's not just physical. It really affects every area of your life and family members as well. And so here's the thing. It takes your whole life from you, not just physically. But God made a way for these people to regain their entire life back in the Old Testament under an old covenant. And so what they would do is, is everything that had been been stolen, you were to take this person who was incurable and you get two birds and you kill one in an earthen vessel. Does that sound familiar? A one that came in an earthen vessel to die. Why? Well, watch this now. You take that dead bird, it's blood and hyssop and scarlet and cedar wood. Do we know of scarlet, like the robe that Jesus wore and hyssop that was used for cleansing and the wood? How about that cross that Jesus hung upon and the blood of the innocent bird? And so what you do is there is you take the blood and you place this bird under the, the one that's alive under the run water with the hyssop and the blood is pouring over the thing and the water flowed. Do, do we know of somebody else who blood and water flowed for mankind? I think that we do. And you cover all that under the blood and you sprinkle that leper and you call him cleansed. And then you, you let that live bird go that's covered in the blood. You let that bird go free. So that's our example for today that we can see that, man, these incurables were then pronounced clean. They got their entire life back along with their health as well. If they can have that because of some feathered bird, I think that because of Jesus hanging on a tree and his blood was shed on the backside of Calvary, you and I ought to be able to expect to be healed as well. It was freedom based on blood. I want you to call the number on the screen tonight. Now, here's what we do. Do you really believe that if some lamb and some bird could bring healing to these people under this old covenant, do you believe that under the new that Jesus could bring healing to you and I today? I want you to call the number. Nobody's going to answer. Now, I know that's different, but here's what we do. We listen to your messages. The prayer team prays over those. We seek Holy Spirit as to what needs to be done and who needs it to be done through, and then, then we're going to call you back. You don't just need some three-minute prayer. So when you call, though, here's the thing. I have you say something very specific because I need your mouth connected to your miracle tonight. When you call, I want you to say this. Donnie, I got a new and better covenant based on newer and better promises, and I am healed of. 
And you just fill in the blank because that's the truth of the word of God right there. We have a new and better. Listen, if they could get it under the old, certainly under a new and better, we ought to be able to have it here too. So Donnie, I have a new and better covenant based on new and better promises I am healed of or delivered from. It could be homosexuality. It could be drugs. It could be addictions. It could be a whole bunch of different things. None of it matters because guess what? It's all covered under this new and better. And I want you to call the number on the screen and you go ahead and say, Donnie, I got a new and better covenant based on new and better promises and I am delivered from or healed from, we're going to pray. We're going to seek Holy Spirit. We're going to call you back. And I believe just like this Old Testament, uh, this Old Testament ritual here, we could be free as a bird, if you will. So healing in the type, should we be able to find healing in the real Jesus? I think so. Let's, I love this one in Leviticus 25 tonight. This is talking about the year of Jubilee. Can you and I find a type in the year of Jubilee? Leviticus 25, 8 through 10, you shall count seven Sabbaths of years for yourself, seven times seven years, and the time of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be to you 49 years. Then you will cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound on the 10th day of the seventh month, on the day of atonement. You shall make the trumpet to sound throughout all your land, and you shall consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land to to its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you, and each of you shall return to his possession, and each of you shall return to his family. Let's just sum it up right here. If you lost it, you got it all back. That's what jubilee was all about. Once every 50 years for them, they did this, and it was a year-long celebration. So here they are. People waited for 49 years. If something was taken from you and you couldn't get it back, this was that time that came where you got it all back. Verse 13 says, in this year of jubilee, each of you shall return to his possession. So let me paint this picture for you now. And I want you to understand what's taking place because Jesus was our Passover. I want you to know that Jesus is our Jubilee as well. But according to this, if you were a person, maybe you fell on hard times. Uh, maybe just things happened. Things didn't go your way possibly. Uh, maybe you did this to yourself. Maybe you didn't live right. Maybe you disobeyed God. And, and all of a sudden, maybe you were doing good and things changed and, and whatever happened and suddenly you lost all your stuff. Maybe it was through an accident, some situation that could have possibly had been beyond your control. But here you are, you had a home, you had your family, maybe you had some possessions or livestock or animals, you fell on some hard times here. And so maybe it was bad investments. Maybe you just totally blew it. I don't know. Maybe you were wasteful and got in trouble with the creditors, but here's the thing. They would come and take everything from you, and maybe it was your fault at times. Maybe it wasn't your fault at times. It doesn't matter. could be the economy. It could have been you, but they come and they take your possessions, and this is what takes place to a good number of folks that are out there right now. Some of you, if we were being honest, some of you did it to yourself. We partied. We drank. Uh, you slept around. You did some things to your body, and guess what? There's a debt to be paid in the physical body. That's what happens to us. There's a physical debt, and your health's been taken from you. Now, it could be something that was unexpected. Well, it could, could have just been a disease. It could have just been an accident. It could be something that you didn't have anything to do with. It could have been hereditary. It could have been that you just good, hard, honest work and you wore your body out. But again, we understand the body pays a price for something. And so if you're unable to pay your debts back then, what they do is they come in, they'll split up your family, take your wife and kids, sell all your stuff. They might enslave them, or they may just come and enslave you and disperse the family. So we know sickness and disease and physical issues, again, it affects more than you. It absolutely affects the family. And certainly there's a lot of things that we lose along the way as well. And they become slaves. And so again, we know a lot of folks that have been slaved to sickness and disease and, and, and can and cannot do a lot of things because of that. But here they are. Let's say you've been in this for 23 years and, and you were working and you were out in the field one day and you were working there and you hear these trumpets blowing and you're like, well, oh, the, it must just be the beginning of the new year. What do I care? I'm out here working off this debt, right? And all of a sudden they keep blowing this trumpet and you're like, why are they still blowing this trumpet all day? And then somebody comes running through the field and they say, it's Jubilee. I'm going home. I'm like, no, no, man. Hey, what's the master going to say? No, no, he can't say anything. It's Jubilee. And all of a sudden you realize, wait a minute, I'm free. And you set that shovel down and you begin to head out of that field because nobody can stop you. And so here's the thing, your family is somewhere else and they're hearing that trumpet too. So now all of a sudden they're coming and you're coming and all of a sudden you see them on the road and you meet together and you're looking for that old homestead that you used to have. And all of a sudden you walk up there and you find that and you find your family and you walk up there and you pull that placard off that has somebody else's name on it. Why? Because it's Jubilee and I'm here to get all of my possessions back that were taken from me. It's Jubilee, I'm taking everything back. So here's the thing, has mankind lost anything? Have you lost 
lost something. Listen, now this is, have you lost a teenager to drugs? This is what I'm talking about here. Have you lost yourself to addiction? Maybe you lost your health and it led to losing your life or medical bills or whatever the case is. Have you lost some things in your life? Well, here's the deal. There was a man born from a woman in the flesh in Luke 4, verses 14 through 19. Jesus went back to Galilee in the power of the spirit and the news about him spread through the entire region and he began teaching in their synagogues and he was praised and glorified and honored by all. So he came to Nazareth where he'd been brought up and it was his custom. He entered into the synagogue on the Sabbath and he stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him and he unrolled the scroll and he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, the Messiah, because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He sent me to announce release or pardon and forgiveness to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set it free those that are oppressed, downtrodden, bruised, crushed by tragedy to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord, the day when salvation and the favor of God abound greatly. Did you catch this? He's talking about Jubilee. He's talking about the time that you get everything back. Why? Because of the anointed one and his anointing became our Jubilee. I want you to pick up the phone right now. I want you to call the number on the screen. We see where Jesus came to forgive sins. He came to pardon your debts. It was a marked time in history where he's bringing recovery of sight to the blind. What's he talking about? He's talking about physical issues there. He's talking about these physical issues. Those that have been downtrodden and bruised and abused and crushed and you've experienced tragedy in your life. I've come to proclaim release to those that have been bound and captive by all those different things. I want you to call me right now. I want you to leave a message. Give us a little bit of time. Nobody's gonna answer. We're gonna pray over that message. We're gonna listen to it and we're gonna get back to you after we hear from Holy Spirit. But I, listen, I want you to call and leave a message and I want you to just say this tonight. Say, Donnie, Jesus has released me from and you fill in the blanks. Friends, that's what Jubilee was all about. And Jesus came as the manifestation of Jubilee in a human form. I want you to call the number right now, friends, because I'm telling you, you've been in slavery and pains and these things have limited you and addictions and you've worked hard to try to get free, but there was a debt that you couldn't pay. That's okay because it's Jubilee. The debt was already paid. Jesus paid the price. I need you to call the number right now. Donnie, Jesus has released me from cancer. He secured my freedom from addiction to meth. Donnie, he has proclaimed that this is the time of favor upon me. You go ahead and call and you speak that truth right now tonight because it is your time. This is that program where you can truly be released from your bondages. Nothing is off limits tonight. Call the number right now. Why? Because he's sounding that trumpet to you. It's Jubilee time. I hope you're catching what took place. He came in and under the power of the Holy Spirit. He stood there to read a reading that was handed to him, something that was written that prophesied some 900 years before. So don't think that this was some coincidence that it was handed to him on this day. It was a pointed time in history right here where he would read this prophecy about himself and this prophecy about you. Oh, you're in this prophecy, by the way, but he's sounding that trumpet right now. That's what this is for you to hear that blast of freedom. When he said, I'm going to preach to the poor. Well, what's the poor man need? He needs provision, doesn't he? He needs a supply and a provision. He needs a supply. And he, guess what? He said tonight, you got that. Do you hear that sound, that trumpet blasting for you? What else? Liberty to the captives. And specifically, what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about sicknesses and diseases that do that to you, holding people captive. They rule over people's lives. It's an oppression, but Jesus came and he proclaimed on that day, no more, no more. Freedom to the captive, recovery of sight to the blind. He's saying to the people that I am right now restoring unto you in every area of your life. I am restoring you right now. Because you remember what? He came and he ransomed us. He paid that debt to begin to free you and I from captivity. Ransomed, redeemed, rescued us. He's giving the, us the opposite of what it was that people had been experiencing. See, he's not denying that you had been experiencing this, right? You were captive. You were paying a debt, but he saw that you couldn't handle the debt. And that's why he sent to Jesus. So he's not denying that this took place. But notice, isn't that what happened with Jesus every time? He would come in and people were experiencing one thing and they would begin to experience the opposite. The lame would walk, the blind would see, the deaf would hear, the dead would raise. He's just bringing you jubilee. That's all that he's doing. He's bringing you jubilee to send forth those that are oppressed and downtrodden, those that are bruised and crushed and beaten down by calamity. Man, he's talking about life. He's talking about when it didn't go right, those times that you felt like I went under for the third time and I'm not coming back up again. It felt like you were drowning in the cares of this world. No, tonight it's jubilee. Can you hear him sounding the alarm to send 
forth is delivered to tell you that you are free and then the free favors and salvation profusely abound. That's not a little bit of freedom, friends. Excessive or a lot, a lot of favors, a lot of salvation. And into connection to all of this, he's talking about healing. What do we mean? A lot of healing, profuse healing, a whole bunch of healing. And then to set forth as free, it is the acceptable year of the Lord. It is your jubilee tonight, glory to God. Not some day on the calendar. Jesus came as the manifested presence of jubilee in the flesh. He came and he said, anybody that'll accept me, you don't have to wait 50 years. You don't have to wait 50 more seconds. If you want to accept me right now, I'm sounding that alarm and proclaiming freedom to the captives tonight. It's a proclamation. You don't have to wait for the sweet by and by because he spoke these words over 2,000 years ago and went forth and it was recorded for you and I to see for eternity, to hear that trumpet blast tonight on this program. This word is timeless. It's alive. And he is, he is proclaiming this book to you on this very night. And the Bible is your paperwork to prove that you're a free man and a free woman on here tonight. Signed, sealed, and delivered. No more shoveling dead works. We can set that thing down and get out of there. And uh, we can come to Jesus. And why? Well, he's the mediator of that new and better covenant for you and I. And so here's the thing. If you can come and you had lost it all, now here's the thing. If your health seemed gone, you get it all back. If your money seemed gone, you get it all back. If your peace and your joy and all these different things were stolen from you, you can get it all back. He's got a peace to bring to you tonight that won't even make sense to you, and it'll guard your heart, and it will guard your minds tonight. That's what he has for you. So this is done, and anybody who decides right now watching this program that it's mine, right now watching this program, I'm going to go ahead and get it back. You've been authorized to do so tonight. Why? Because he sounded that alarm a couple thousand years ago, and he said, listen, I am Jubilee. You don't have to wait for an appointed time. This was the appointed time. He actually went on and said, today, this is fulfilled in your hearing. What was he saying? I just proclaimed it. I just blew that trumpet. Why? I just sealed the deal for Jubilee from here to eternity that the moment that you want to accept me, what do we do? We confess with our mouth. Isn't that right? That's just sounding an alarm to let everybody know, hey, I'm free right now in Jesus' name. So don't allow anything to stop you. I love this. I love this. That Now, here's the thing now. When they heard that it was Jubilee, nobody could make them go. Nobody could make them go, but nobody could keep them from going either. But don't let anybody stop you. There ain't no demon in hell that can stop you. There ain't no man or woman or child. There ain't no denomination that can stop you. No sickness and disease. No pain, no trouble that can stop you. He is sounding that alarm tonight. We know there's a thief that came to steal, but we also know there was one that came to give us life and life more abundant. What's that? That's called Jubilee. I want you to call right now. I want you to pick up that phone one more time tonight. I want you to dial that number. I want you to leave that message. Listen, we're going to pray. We're going to seek Holy Spirit when we hear these messages. We do, man. We go, we go to him on your behalf. We really do. But I want you to call, and I want you, I want you to just call tonight, and I want you to say this, Donnie, I'm getting my blank back. You just go ahead and fill in the blanks right there. I'm getting my health back. I'm getting my wealth back. I'm getting my family back. I'm getting my shout back. I'm getting my, whatever it is that has been taken from you, I want you to understand that tonight Jesus says, all you got to do is begin to proclaim it and hear the sound of that alarm because he is bringing freedom to the captives. Again, call me tonight, Donnie. I'm getting my life back from drugs. I'm getting my health back from sickness and disease. Jesus has come. That trumpet has sound. That's all this program is. And when you speak it, all you're doing is blowing your trumpet as well. So I want you to speak that tonight. I want you to call right here and let's get back into the plans and the purposes that God has always had for you and put away the dead works and be free in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining us today on Christ the Healer with Don Allen. We encourage you to connect with us on Two Guys in a Bible Facebook page and view daily posts on healing. For more information about Christ the Healer and this ministry, go to twoguysandabible.com. You'll find products that are helpful in confirming that God is willing to heal and He's still doing it today. Take this opportunity to receive a free audio collection of 101 healing scriptures on CD. Find out what happened when the High Witch of the Four Corners confronted a group of believers at a tent revival, Seven Days with the Witch by Don Allen. Order your copy today by going to twoguysinabible.com. For additional teaching and great programming, listen to the 1412 Radio Network. Get online and type in 1412.com and select Listen Now. If you need to contact us for prayer or you'd like to schedule Don to come and speak in your area, you can call or send an email message and someone will contact you. So thanks again for joining us and we'll see you next time on Christ the Healer.